Welcome to the Ron Seggy Show. So why don't you? You can try fighting the law all you want, but the law is always going to win. From politicians and celebrities to sports figures and business leaders, they're fighting the law. Now, here to sort out the nation's top legal news stories is America's favorite legal analyst, Royal Oaks. This is the Royal Oaks Show. Robin people with a six gun. I fought the law and the law one. I fought the law. Thank you, my horn, and welcome to the Royal Oak Show, and welcome to our co-host, Ken Jeffries. How are you doing, Ken? Hi there. What a what a week, boy, I'll tell you. A big in, one. In the news, It yeah. was a huge week. And we, sitting in for our millennial correspondent, Connor Oaks, who's on special assignment, we are so delighted to have back on the show our Boomer correspondent, Rob Marenko. Rob, how are you? Fine, Royal. Thank you for having me in. It's a pleasure being here. Well, you know, I think I ought to take this Sound opportunity. Sounded sincere, didn't it? And you're a boomer. Yes, co- that you're a bo- you are a, oh, that's right. Well, we're both boomer correspondents, but that's okay. That's true. That's true. I think I should take this opportunity to formally apologize to Rob Marenko. Uh-oh. I, I, yeah, I, I, you, I owe you an apology, oh, Rob. okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, we all work with KBC, and uh, uh, Ken is newsman at KBC right now. Um, uh, I fill in occasionally. Uh, I was filling in for uh, Doug McIntyre some months ago, and Rob Marenko was the newsman. In the morning, and so I kind of set you up. You may remember this. Um, I thought it would be fun to to ask you about one of our favorite movies, Groundhog Day. You know where Bill Murray lives the same day yes. over and over. Familiar and over. with it. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I thought to myself, well, gosh, what would a person do? You know, if they spent the the eternity or years and years, I think some scientists figured out he probably did it five thousand times. What would they do during that same day over and over? You know, he'd learn to play the piano and so yeah, on. He yeah. saved the kid who was falling out mm-hmm. of the tree. So without warning, Rob, I, I said to Rob, so what would you do, Rob? You like the movie, <laughs> right? And he said, well, I don't know. He hadn't thought about it. So I said, well, tell us. You know, you're on the air. What right. would you do every day? And he said something like, well, I, I don't know. I guess go down to my favorite pizza place and eat pizza. And so then, of course, he had to say, so, Royal, what would you do? And I said, oh, well, I'd work on curing cancer and uh, help the homeless, and I'd visit the elderly in a convalescent home. But it's okay if you just want to go eat pizza, Rob. Well, yeah. you know, I so thought about I, it. I felt so bad that I'd set yes. Rob up like you that. Did. and Because I looked pretty good. I looked like Mother Teresa. Yeah, you And did. he just wanted to eat pizza. So that wasn't fair, and so I want to formally apologize to you. You're you like going to give me another. I, first of all, I accept your apology, well, but do you want to give me another opportunity to answer? Well, if you'd like, sure. Yeah, I, I hadn't really thought about the about conversation you. going that direction um, because I, I haven't planned anything from my end, but go right ahead. Well, I thought about it. I oh, thought, terrific. You know, well, lay it on it. It sounded a little shallow. and okay. it sounded. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and well, I, not deep dish wouldn't be shallow. No, and I thought, well, you know what? Be the, thank you I very think much. Yeah. what I'd like to do is uh, go to Hooters every day. Cause they, <laughs> no, pizza can get old. Hooters, though, they get the sandwiches. They've got the, the wings. Yeah, and let me go in there. A little bit of variety. Uh, do you want a wingman to go with you? I'd go with you. A wingman? So uh, I get it. Well, thanks that's for very, keeping us abreast of what you want to do. So since you, know? you since you were here on the show uh, last, Rob, we yes. actually changed things a little bit. We did. We, yeah. <laughs> you know how everybody eats their vegetables, and then they eat their Salisbury steak, and then finally, if they clean their plate, they get their dessert. That's right, life, right, right? Right, that's life. Not here no? on the Royal Oak Show. This is called Dessert First. Oh. Yeah. We'll get to the top stories, North Korea and the Inspector General's report. Oh, what's going on in North court. Korea? Uh, some stuff. All right. Ken's got the, the top story there. But we'll get to that <laughs> in the famed B block. But in the A block, we like to get into the dessert first, okay? okay? The fun stuff. All right. Mm. And one of the fun things about the show is our Moron of the Week uh, competition. We have a Moron of the Week at the top of the show. At the bottom, we vote on who is most moronic. And so uh, here is the first candidate I want to run by you guys. And you probably followed the news story. You probably reported on it on KBC. Uh, an off-duty FBI agent named Chase Bishop. The guy has oh, yeah. some dance moves, okay? He can bust some moves on the disco mm-hmm. floor. And, of course, people were videotaping his impressive dance moves, and he decides it's time for the backflip. And he does a pretty decent backflip. It was not, wasn't an Olga Corbett-type stuff, but it was okay. And then the pistol, the sidearm, yeah. clatters yeah, to yeah, the floor. Yeah. And it, as he's grabbing it, and I'm not sure if it was just clattering and shot or when he grabbed it, it shot, but it shot another patron in the leg. Yep. 
Now, I think this guy, Chase Bishop, uh, deserves to be one of our candidates for Moron Definitely. of the Week. Yeah. And I just wonder, have you, have you ever been embarrassed anywhere close to that in your life? I think of the times I've been sort of embarrassed, mortified. I'd be like one-tenth of that. Can you imagine him looking at the crowd? The guy is bleeding and screaming, and he has done a, bla- a backflip to cause that. I, I think oh, that would awful. be the worst. Well, it's funny you mentioned about being embarrassed because, I don't know, it seems like just minutes ago, our host here uh, <laughs> explained that he would cure cancer if he had the <laughs> Groundhog Day time over and over again when I said that I would go eat pizza every day at my favorite parlor. I was pretty embarrassed about that. There's a little bit of mortification there. <laughs> well, I think this guy's a strong candidate for, for moron of the, the week. It was we'll a dance out. competition, and up on the board it said, <laughs> Bishop, number one with a bullet. And I thought, you know what, that's insensitive. Yeah, yeah, that? Very good. That's yeah. what that is. Very good. So another feature I don't think we had when you were here last, Rob, is yeah. uh, Guess the Verdict. Uh, it's sort oh, of a okay. mini game show mm-hmm. here. Oh, it sounds like and fun. And you two guys get to guess, and, and I actually keep score. Okay. Uh, Connor and uh, Ken have been trying this for a while. Uh, Connor's batting average is 333. He's gotten a third in. Ken, you're batting zero. But today's your chance to my, get up on the pr- map. My war is pretty good. Wins against replacement. So here's the Another first question. Fan. We're going to ask you guys to guess how the judge turned out here. Robert Barzik of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, had a hard time getting past his messy divorce to Rachel. He moved out to a house just three doors down. That was the first mistake. His idea of maintaining cordial relations with his ex was to make pig and elephant noises every time she'd walk by his house on her way to the bus stop. He'd do his impression of an oinking pig, and he'd even play a tape of the tune Old MacDonald had a farm. That's mature. She, uh, he did not have the maturity gene. No. She brings harassment charges. So what do you guess? Did the judge find him guilty of harassment or not guilty of the charge? Ken? I'm going to say say not guilty. Okay. Because uh, because the the judge... uh, Maybe it may have been an animal farm freak or something. <laughs> oh, you mean a George Orwell fan? Yeah, the, or, or, yeah, maybe that too, yeah. So what about you, Rob? What's well, your guess? Well, at this point, I think it would be <laughs> more interesting and entertaining if I said guilty, because now that... Guilty. Oh, yeah, just, to was, be, just to be... Uh, he, he, yeah, he was guilty, man, so, yeah, so, yeah, so you got that one right. Okay. Uh, question two, we're going for three questions. Number two, a San Francisco man claims that after a meal of chili, salad, French bread, and six beers, he then took baking soda, which he says caused his stomach to explode. What? He sues the Arm & Hammer Company, you know, they make baking soda, for $2,000, saying a warning should have been given that uh, a stomach just might explode under these circumstances. So uh, why don't you go first this time, Rob? Um, who do you think won, uh, the baking soda company or the poor man with no stomach? I think it's the baking soda company on that one. Okay, and uh, what, I, about, I, what I about actually, you, Ken? I agree with that, yeah. I actually You're agree. both right. The baking there soda company wins. So what's my average now, like 150 you're, or something? You're one for a five, so you're 200. Uh, last question. 47-year-old Beatrice Shaw, clerk at Citicorp Bank in New York, sued her employers, claiming they refused to help her in her attempt to control her body odor problem. She said all she wanted was somebody to tell her discreetly when her odor problem flares up. Instead, the company criticized her. At the trial, one fellow employee said she vomited from the stench. The woman was seeking $1.2 million in damages. So who wins? The stinky lady or Citicorp who just didn't give a damn? So, Ken, you go first oh, this I time. City, huh? I guess Citicorp, I don't know. Okay. What I'm going you? with Ken on Citicorp on that. You guys are both right. Yeah. Citicorp yeah. wins. Absolutely. Yeah. My average is going up now. So, right. uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you were go- You went from zero to uh, whatever. Zero to hero. Two for, or, two or for some, six. Whatever is. it is. Well, yeah. that's 333, so I think you're doing pretty well. Um, all right, so harassment's in the news. Uh, the Me Too movement is powerful. Netflix, uh, guys, is, is getting on the bandwagon. They are banning employees from behaving in a certain way, and some people are criticizing them. They're banning workers from looking at each other for more than five seconds as part of its anti-harassment rules. Uh, I, personally, I think even four <laughs> seconds might be a little creepy. Rob, you strike me as a ten-second guy. Uh, well, there goes the Christmas <laughs> staring contest. That's for darn sure. Yeah, that would be off of the agenda for, yeah. for the competition. That would make bad radio, wouldn't it? The uh, new policy also bans the company's film crews from asking their colleagues for their phone numbers. Oh, this so, is just silly. So they're getting kind of strict. Uh, I, I take it from, from your body language here, yes. Rob. You're, you're not approving of this? You know how most people meet? They meet at work. <laughs> 
Not anymore. Not uh, on Netflix. They don't. This is just <laughs> not staring at each other for five, four seconds. Come on. Four seconds is okay. All right. Yeah. It's five seconds. No, that they how, don't. Five sec- <laughs> you know what? And there's the old five second rule about uh, when That's something true. falls on the ground. That's true. In you really the want kitchen. To eat it after that, right? Other rules include at Netflix: don't give lingering hugs or touch anybody for a lengthy period of time. Now the problem is they're not defining lengthy in this circumstance. Uh, five seconds, probably. And, and what's a hug? I'm not sure. We'd have to look Wait at a minute, Webster's. It's five seconds. Where do you stare if you're... Well, I guess you could stare at the wall behind the person you're hugging. I, I suppose. So you're wondering, <laughs> Ken, what a hug me? What, what is the definition? We of could get two, uh, an Oxford English or? Dictionary with a magnifying glass. That would give us an answer. It says, uh, don't ask a colleague out more than once if they've said no. So apparently persistence is being banned. Well, that's not going to work in the sales department. you got to be <laughs> <laughs> trying like a no. Yeah. Don't, don't flirt is another rule. The rules What about people that don't take no, right, no, take no for an answer? Yeah. Right. And the rules encourage employees to shout, stop, don't do that again if the colleague has done something inappropriate. It's all stupid because, as we well know from uh, Glenn Gary, G- Glenn Ross, <laughs> is coffee is only for closers. So if you give up <laughs> after one no. It's only for closers. No, I, you, you got to keep going. I think so this the, is just ridiculous. This People is never, part. We're not going to have anybody getting pregnant anymore. This is part of the Me Too movement, uh, Rob. And does, I, does you're just going to have to get bored. Of, does this mean oldies radio stations? Sorry, K Earth. I know you're really an oldies station. Uh. Class. They can't play "Stop in the Name of Love" anymore. <laughs> Probably well, it's not. It's me too. Uh, me, me too should be. Hey, I'm getting some too. It shouldn't be me too. <laughs> means nobody gets any. You know, it's. it's <laughs> So that's, me too. I want, I, want some. I like that. Want some too? You know, yeah. it's funny you mentioned that about. You stuff. know, Hooters is open. That's stop yeah. in the name of love <laughs> thing, Ken. I think the Christmas song "Baby It's Cold Outside" actually that's seriously right. was out of there, off the playlist because of the lines. Because the, the subject right. matter is the gal it wants to leave, mm-hmm. and he's saying, "Oh, right. baby, don't go." And you know, he's pretty insistent; he doesn't want her to leave. Yeah. Larry, so, there's, an, there's another song called "Baby, Please Don't Go." It's an old rock and roll song. You know, there you, you go. It's you, off the list. Uh, so you, and uh, let's spend the night together by the Rolling Stones. Yep. I mean, that was anyway. So you guys, uh, whiskey fans, you like to have sure. a spot of whiskey now yeah. and then? I had one just before the show. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so New Hampshire has a, um, a spirits brand <coughs> called Tamworth Distilling, mm-hmm. and they've brought out a new limited edition whiskey you might be interested in. It's got a special ingredient. It's called Castorum. You've heard of castor oil, so this is castorum. Okay. It is a secretion that oh comes boy. from a beaver's castor oh sacs. Oh, no. Located not too far from it, its tail by the rodent's bottom. Uh, I didn't even know beavers had castor sacs, but apparently that's where castor oil is stored. Jeez, who and discovered uh, that? You, you, the look on your face, it's almost like you don't want to go to a tasting, Rob. Well, no, I think back in the oldie days when they were just, you know, somebody came across, how did they discover? Some guy hold up a beaver and go, Hey, guys, get a load of this. I wouldn't know. The House of Tamworth Eau de Musk, Uh as the beaver-based whiskey is called, uh, is less crazy than it sounds. It's not far off from honey bourbon uh, spiked with bee vomit. And I had no idea that was a thing. Oh, boy. You're just such an elitist, How do you make a bee sick? (laughs) Yeah. No honey for you. Though beaver (laughs) bum secretions might sound gross, with its sweet notes of vanilla and fruit, castorum has actually been used as a flavoring additive for hundreds of years. I had no idea about this. The sac excretion exhibits bright and fruit qualities, raspberry, and rich leathery notes along with creamy vanilla aroma. You can never use the word excretion, I don't think, and and have a pleasant conversation. (laughs) So finally, uh, you may be surprised at this study, guys. 10% 10% of people admit to checking their phone during sex. Uh, is this stunning news to you, or do you are you just, oh, yeah, I don't know, sure. let, me ch- let me check Google right yeah. now to find out. You know, I don't really understand how, how well, it Well, it's works. hard not to if you're on a porn site. <laughs> it says here 70%. <laughs> oh, you have sex with somebody with else. Okay. 70% <laughs> percent I got you. of I, participants I, I. admitted to checking their phones as they used the toilet or urinal, oh, okay. and sure. 75% of participants sleep with their phone um, so I guess we're basically you know in a screen era well, That's our, pre- all our president it. does it on the phone That's I mean it does it on the <laughs> does it on the phone hey when yeah. we come back folks we're phone. gonna well, get whatever. the panel's views on the North Korea news on the Royal Oak Show we'll be back on CRN with the Royal Oak Show you experiencing pain back pain shoulder elbow or hand pain pain from a sports injury If so, schedule a visit with Dr. Michael Sheps, the leading expert in laser therapy for pain management. 
call 310-873-4422 or go to drsheps.com. Experience Epic T, the breakthrough laser therapy system that Dr. Sheps developed to make you pain-free in less time. Laser therapy is a non-invasive, safe, and effective in-office procedure that penetrates deep into your skin without damaging the tissue. It perfectly targets areas of pain to promote fast, natural healing. Relax your muscles, ease muscle spasms, joint stiffness, and arthritis pain while increasing blood circulation. For over 25 years, Dr. Sheps has helped Olympic athletes and sports enthusiasts alike get back in the game. Schedule your visit with Dr. Sheps at his Brentwood office in California. Call 310-873-4422 or visit drsheps.com. That's D-R-S-H-E-P-S.com, 310-873-4422. Hi, friends. This is Larry Manetti. Go to LarryManetti.com to get my book, Aloha Magnum. You'll read all about the wonderful guest stars like Carol Burnett, Elvis Presley, Frank Sinatra, and many, many more. There is an episode guide and my favorite recipes that I really cook at home. I will include a free signed photo with every book. Get Aloha Magnum at LarryManetti.com. Order now. Aloha. The legends of Kaanapali Luau at the Kaanapali Beach Hotel will take your breath away with an abundant feast, spellbinding dances and music from Le Pono Productions. Be greeted with a lei and browse to see island crafts made by local artisans. As you hear the poo or conch shell blow, your luau experience will begin. The featured entree is a whole roasted pig and a bountiful menu of some of Hawaii's favorite food choices. Oh, you can't forget our famous made in-house taro poi. As your night comes to an end under the spell of the moon. Be amazed by the famous firewalk. By the end of the night, you'll be full and we hope you'll have made new friends and some forever memories while you continue to listen to music from Maui's local Hawaiian musicians every Monday night at Hawaii's most Hawaiian hotel. Kanapali Beach Hotel voted Best Aloha Spirit by Hawaii Magazine readers. Call 667-0128 or visit legendsofkaanapali.com for your exciting island adventure. Trying to sell your old car? Instead, donate your vehicle to Heritage for the Blind. Pickup is free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats, whether they run or not. Call right now and receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call 1-800-785-9618. Donate your car today. That's 1-800-785-9618. Welcome back to the Royal Oak Show with our co-host Ken Jeffries and our Boomer correspondent Rob Marinko. So before we get to the top story, guys, uh, North Korea has got to be the top story. I, I just I know you're going to be uh, you're so interested in the U.S. Open golf tournament this week. You've probably been glued to the set, but just in case you feel sorry for Tiger Woods, who missed the cut? Oh, he did miss the cut. He missed the cut along with Rory McIlroy. Some and good along, golfers missed the oh, cut. Oh, Jason Day, uh, yeah. just a, a lot of Bubba Watson. Um, <laughs> Phil Mickelson uh, barely made the cut and, and had a rather embarrassing moment t- today on the, the course. I don't know if you guys followed that. But what I was going to say is we shouldn't feel too bad about Tiger because the paper was describing his yacht that he uh, he docked there at the uh, Sag Harbor Yacht Club there right by the Shinnecock uh, golf course. You said it. You it. said Shinnecock on the air. Well, I, I have to. Shinnecock, that's where the, you know, yeah. that's where the U.S. Open well, is. Let me tell you, I grew up not far from the Long uh, really? I grew up on Long, Long Island. You were said you, Shinnecock. Were you a caddy? He said Beaverine. It's not it's more than five minutes now, ago. Now he said Shinnecock. Shinnecock is actually named after the Shinnecock Indians, uh-huh. which is no relation I, to the, I did not know that. Which, which is no relation to the Fogali Indians. <laughs> yeah. but we, can't, we can't talk about them on, on the air. <laughs> But so it's big into Johnny Carson. Yeah. So yeah, here's the, the deal, guys. Mm-hmm. Yes. Here but is a description of Tiger's yacht. Yeah. It's 150 feet long. It's named Privacy. Uh, it, the flag on the back of the boat is the Cayman Islands because that's where you register your boat because they uh, give course. you tax it's savings. Tax things, yeah. It has five staterooms accommodating ten guests, four rooms for the crew, and it's got an eight-person hot tub. You, would you like to guess the price tag for Tiger's yacht? Should be like the price is right, you know. How close can you get? Forty-eight million dollars. Forty-eight million. What do you guess? Uh, f- uh, okay, twenty-five mil. Twenty million. So uh, you you uh, came, that, that, came that, a little closer. Uh, That's right. Do I get the show? Get the price is right. That, 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 so uh, I'll I'll tell you what happened that, to Phil that, Mickelson. That, 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 uh, <laughs> I play golf. You know, I I enjoy the game and I watch golf. I've never seen this ever 
in But did in you ever life. line up your putts? Well, here's this. He was lining up his putt. Oh, Phil Mickelson putt. had like a nine foot putt, and he hits it, and it goes way too fast and, and is too far. You know what he did? He ran after it. And he and he hit it back toward the hole before it stopped rolling. Oh, you can't do that. You can do it. You incur a two-stroke penalty. Oh. Who knew? And apparently, the green was so slick and slopey that he said to himself, I know if I slap it back toward the hole, I will be assessed two strokes. But if it goes into this ravine, oh. where, where, well, it'll be worse. Right? Yeah, this, this creature will, this sea creature will so, eat it. So he got away with it? And that he got away that? with it. Yeah, but the but reporters were all over him because you showed disrespect for the U.S. Open. But that's, but that's the rules, I guess, right? Yeah. Uh, it's weird, though. I mean, that I, same, I got to admit, that same thing happened to me. Now, granted, the ball was going into a windmill at the time. <laughs> yeah, right. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very similar well, circumstance. That's, and at the Sherman Oaks uh, putt golf and stuff. Right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not to be taken yeah. by All right, yeah. so we do have to talk about <laughs> the important news. Right. And, oh, my gosh, what we a do. huge story, uh, North Korea. Uh, my personal feeling is that if this thing works out and they talk about um, – a Nobel Prize for mm -hmm. Trump. I don't think that, that they can give it to him because if they do, you remember how in Mars Attacks when Slim Whitman does his yodeling and their heads explode? Yes. The little guys, they literally explode. I think Rosie O'Donnell, <laughs> Alec Baldwin, <laughs> and Michael Moore's heads oh, will literally explode if Trump got a Nobel then Prize. Then why, why shouldn't they give it to him then? If well, see, now you're displaying your bias here. So, yeah, my um, pro-Trump bias, Joe. Yeah. I'm I'm wondering first what you guys Maga. think of of the idea <laughs> the idea of Trump kind of cozying up to to Kim. I mean, he was literally buddy. Bu right. It was like a buddy movie, <laughs> touching and guiding through the door. And you're thinking, well, this guy does you know kill five million people a year. You know, he's basically on a good day. Uh, head, on a bad head day. Of a crime on a bad family. day. Actually, yeah. yeah. He's head of a crime family. He's a gangster. He's a dictator. And and Trump seemingly has no concern about that. Now you think back. Okay, Nixon was toasting to Mao, and Mao killed fifty million people. Uh, and you just see it as well. This is geopolitics, and Nixon wanted to open the door to China. He wanted to maneuver around Russia. So there's the justification. So maybe I'm, uh, I'm, I'm wrong to feel this way, but does it trouble you at all that Trump doesn't seem to care at all about the fact that this guy is a monster and instead all he cares about is doing a deal? Uh, can I answer? Yeah, go, well, uh, go, and I'll rebut it probably. But <laughs> <go ahead>. Well, <laughs> actually, I, I like uh, the president's answer on this to a reporter that asked uh, something very similar. Right. And his answer was, well, to me, the other side of the argument is unthinkable, and that is allowing tens of millions of people to die in a nuclear exchange. That's so true. So That's I'm willing, at stake. You know, because a year ago, especially the president's opponents were talking about he's going to start a nuclear war. Mm -hmm. Didn't start a nuclear war. He's at the table with this guy, and it can be argued that every president that we've had in the last several decades have, has cozied up to a dictator. That's yep. true. For, that is true. For an effort. It's the nature last of president, diplomacy. Last president, the number one sponsor of state terror, terror is Iran. He gave him a bit and a half Well, you know what? But this time we'll have condos in North Korea. Uh, sir, he was after a, a, the beaches a, a deal, are right? Beautiful. He was after a deal. That's what the video condos, shows. The condos. No, it was pretty amazing. When we come back, I, I want to get your thoughts also on whether or not Trump uh, maybe gave up a little something, no military exercises, but what did he get in return? Stay with us on the Royal Oak Show. We'll be back on CRN with the Royal Oak Show. Hi, everyone. This is Fred Dreyer with a big announcement. My new movie, Highway 395, has just been released. Don't miss this classic modern-day Western set along Highway 395 in California. It's an action thriller with some romance, too. You can own Highway 395 today by going to my brand new website, fredryer.co. That's fredryer.co. Get my new movie, Highway 395, and check out my new website, fredryer.co. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS? News flash: the president has changed the tax laws, and now you may be able to pay the IRS less. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, the tax doctor can help you pay the IRS as little as possible allowed by law. There are new tax laws for business owners, the self-employed, even W-2 workers. If you have a back tax problem or a few years of unfilled returns, new help to save you money is now here. Call right now to see how the new tax 
tax laws can help you. Plus, right now, we'll waive the consultation fee and give you our free tax savings report. Attention business owners, the self-employed, and W-2 workers. Make this free call to the tax doctor now and learn how to take advantage of the new tax laws that may help you pay the IRS less. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. That's 800-985-1610. Robert Conrad fans, listen up. From 1965 to 1969, it was nonstop excitement with Robert Conrad as James T. West and Ross Martin as Artemis Gordon in the Wild Wild West TV show. 30 years have passed since the first release of the Wild Wild West, the series book. And now, a new book is back and better than ever. Susan Kessler and her team put together thousands of hours of research, great photographs, interviews with original members, and so much more. The first edition was long considered a collector's dream. Now you can order the brand new 30th anniversary print edition online at wildwildwestbook.com for $38.95. The information remains, but there's more pictures. They're in color, 650 sketches and photographs, and so much more. Jim and Artie live again in the Wild Wild West, the series 30th anniversary edition. Go to wildwildwestbook.com. Order it today, wildwildwestbook.com, and have Robert Conrad in your home tonight. You order a glass of your favorite Cabernet, fresh asparagus, hollandaise on the side, a filet, medium rare. You unfurl your napkin with a flare, close your eyes, and prepare to listen. Ah, there it is. The sweet music you long to hear. The sizzle. The sizzle of a Roots Chris steak. The most magnificent corn-fed prime beef, broiled to perfection at 1,800 degrees. Some call it a sizzle. We call it an anthem. As the waiter approaches, you think, is this one mine or that one? Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Like Ruth always said, life's too short to eat anywhere else. Make a reservation online at rootschris.com or by calling 800-544-0808. Trying to sell your old car? Instead, donate your vehicle to Heritage for the Blind. Pickup is free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats, whether they run or not. Call right now and receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call 1-800-785-9618. Donate your car today. That's 1-800-785-9618. Welcome back to the Royal Oak Show with our co-host, Ken Jeffries, and our Boomer correspondent. Boom. Boom. Rob Marinko. So, uh, North Korea, I uh, was kind of teeing up this question for you guys. Um, Trump says, well, okay, we're going to stop the military exercises in, uh, in, in near South Korea. And people are saying, well, what are you getting in return for that? Um, do you think that Trump was wrong to give up anything when apparently Kim is saying he's going to denuclearize, but there's no real commitment or promise? Me first, yeah. Yeah, I think he gave away this on fir- at first blush. Now, this could change, of course, because everything changes with Trump. It could change with tomorrow morning's tweet. But I think he did give away the store, at least at first blush, to walk away from there and say, oh, by the way, we're canceling the, uh, the war games. It was like, huh? And that was an ad lib, I think, that... You know, we don't even know what they what, what they signed. On they're, the other they're, they're hand, to have a big a deal is the the war game situation. I mean, one exercise, and Trump points out, you know, we're going to save a bunch of money. Why didn't they sign a thing? And why didn't they sign a statement ending the Korean War? I mean, uh, I guess apparently they did not. And a lot of, of course, that, that stuff, would be symbolic, really. I mean, the Korean War kind of ended well, in 1953. Well, but it is the reason for our troops, 30,000 oh. troops, to be on the DMZ. Why is did the he Korean say? War. Well, isn't it just for security? I mean, we have troops it everywhere. It is security. We got them in because, Germany and because Africa. Worst, why would, why because why would he say? On, I think why would he argument. say? Now, my father-in-law proudly served in, in the Korean War. Now, how old is he now? My wife's off screen. How old is your is my is my father? Eighty-five. Eighty-five. So he's eighty-five. Remember, and he said Trump said this week. That his the parents of the Korean War vets, of, of those missing in action, were, right. were, were he corrected you know, himself. Well, he did. He said the sons and daughters. He, he said it like two seconds later. He corrected. Did he? Himself. Did he correct he himself? Did. I didn't. It's did. it's funny. I didn't. Why? Well, I, I first I thought I didn't hear. Didn't yeah, you hear what you just because said? Because otherwise said, the parents would have been in. You know, they would have been. Well, besides, one hundred and twenty years yeah. old and long he dead. He said. But, he said the children of the. He's corrected it like 
couple seconds later. After no, I, I know that's a, that's kind of a faux pas, and it, it's probably not worth jumping down the throat well, on. Well, I mean, and the other side of the know. coin is we've moved from a situation where people were genuinely concerned that they were going to be incinerated in a, a nuclear people attack. People in Honolulu well, were panicking yeah, when they got exactly the missile, right. just thinking they're getting a real missile. And we've sure. moved from that to yeah, a no, point where true. we're yeah. making nice with this guy, and there's serious talk about <clears throat> denuclearization. Now, I suppose, theoretically, he could turn on a dime, but I think Trump's enemies are unwilling to acknowledge that, you know, from an objective standpoint, things definitely have improved over the last six months. That he might do something good, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, because it's... It, you know, he considers himself, I think, the alpha dog, and what the alpha dog says oh, yeah. goes. Yeah, and and uh, and that may, in this case, be a good thing. But we but we don't know that because, you know, he doesn't play nice with others on occasion too in his own country. So let's meaning talk Trump, about this case. And also meaning Kim, I, I would suppose. Too. I'm sure. So let's talk about the uh, Russia investigation and uh, the Comey situation. Big Inspector General's report. And, of course, the Inspector General is kind of the watchdog to make sure everybody in the Department of Justice, FBI, doing the right thing. And he came out and he said Comey was insubordinate. Apparently Comey really concealed the fact he was going to go public in July 2016 and blast Hillary. But at the end of the speech, well, it, it's, it doesn't rise to the level of criminality. But also, I mean, all of these texts came out, including, you know, the Peter and Lisa show, uh, well, uh, the boyfriend and girlfriend, and one of the texts that hadn't been revealed before is Lisa saying, Peter, Peter, Trump's not going to be president, <laughs> is he? And Peter says, no, we'll stop it. I mean, he's in charge of the Hillary email server investigation. He's involved in the Russia collusion investigation. Is he the person you want on your jury as an objective no person? No signs of bias there. And yeah, but the conclusion was, well, you know, it didn't actually affect their their operations. Mm. Uh, it, I mean, it seems to me the inspector general was unwilling to go to the to reach the obvious conclusion that uh, this is a, a really bad thing, that there's no way somebody that biased should have been involved in the investigation. Yeah, that was that was ridiculous. And and uh, and uh, I don't know who should be. It's like the old Howard Cosell. Who goofed? I've got to know. Mm -hmm. You know. But yeah, that uh, that certainly doesn't. <laughs> There's doesn't another good, you know? a point I haven't heard anybody make, and that's the fact that you can take all the Peter Strzok texts and look at them and say he's biased. But the thing that concerns me more is his level of intellect, and that is to be stupid enough to believe that you can text and have it never come out because right. nobody mm -hmm. right. nobody yeah, exactly. uh, nobody right. uh, uh, listens to your t or, or reads your texts we're not getting hacked from the Russians because he's one of the guys that fully believe we were yeah, but he could put all the stuff on Twitter which is kind of the, they all tweeted this right no th these were texts these weren't tweeted these oh, they were, were, they were, texts. were but texts but still you know you can retrieve those and they did yeah either but, way but you're right he's not a rocket me, scientist the, he's not a rocket scientist an FBI agent in charge of something this big should have common sense to know that if you're going to say something <laughs> incendiary which i'm sure that you have to a reasonable person could believe that this is incendiary when you're talking about stopping a presidential candidate so make sure he doesn't become president. I'm sorry, but you're talking about the the Justice Department, pretty big organization in in the scheme of yep. things in the U.S. So let's visit the Supreme Court, shall we? Party down with notorious RBG. Uh, <laughs> she, she was not happy to, this week. Big voter uh, rights decision, a voter and law decision uh, came out of the U.S. Supreme Court, and five to four decision, the conservatives win. They upheld a federal law that says it's okay to send out notices to people who were registered voters every several years and say, okay, please confirm, here's a postage paid card, please confirm that you're still alive and you still live at this address, and send it back. And, and if you don't send it back after multiple tries, we're going to take you off the rolls. The Democrats went nuts. This is terrible. We're going to well, prevent why, people. Why is that, I wonder? Well, people are going to be prevented the right to vote. And so on. And the U.S. Supreme Court said, you know, the, the federal law is, calls for that. It's it's not a racist thing. It's not a stupid thing. It's just a rational so way this, to this make mean, sure the voter rolls are correct. Does this mean Jack Kennedy would never be president in 1960 because all the dead people voted yeah, in Cook County? That Mayor Daley, he, he put him the, in there. Nobody in Chicago is going to vote for him. You know, you know, <laughs> No, you know what? And this, well, this goes back to Sam Giancana and Joe Ken and you know the, the Joe Kennedy Senior. When Joe Kennedy went to Sam, to, you know, he went to you know, Sam Momo Giancana, and Giancana promised that the dead people in Cook County would turn out for Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the problem. The, it's easy to – voting in, fraud <laughs> is, <laughs> is a big deal. Uh, you got to constantly be diligent, and according to the U.S. Supreme Court, it's, it's reasonable to at least check and ask people uh, for their addresses. Hey, a big story this week. Uh, some billionaire named uh, Draper, I guess is his name, he wants to split California up into uh, three states. And I'm wondering what you guys think. I mean, you know, 
you can run for governor maybe of, of one of the states. Uh, he, he's, his idea is there are going to be three states. Uh, they're going to call Northern California, the area of San Francisco, San Jose, Sacramento, and all the way up to the Oregon border. Secondly, there will be Southern California. That's Fresno, Riverside, and down to San Diego. And then there will just be plain old California, which is basically the coast, L.A., Santa Barbara, up to Salinas. Each state would have 12 or 13 million people. And so I'm wondering, you think that we're going to sneak this in? Uh, and you think uh, the Congress would go along with it? No, no. Why, chance why, why, in not? why not? No. You don't think the rest of the country wants California to have six senators instead of two senators? Yeah, there's the, the, you hit it on the nose. That's Of course not. But what, what if what, all, what Congress would allow that? But what if they're all Republican? They're not going to be Would that be a better up. idea? No, it would not be a better idea. You don't want that much you, representation you mean like there'd be an academic ge- geological uh, area. Uh, huh? uh, there'd be an epidemic of common sense throughout California. Yeah, 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 is yeah, that yeah, what yeah, you're yeah. saying, Ken? I don't know. Geographical area is what I meant to say. Geogra- yeah, but, right. Ge- but <laughs> I, I think in argument, you know, <laughs> from that many rocks, you cannot have that many senators. I think an argument can be made that the Democrats would be overrepresented. Now, the argument against that is the fact that the state of... Uh, what's the state inland? I forgot. Which well, Southern, Cal- Southern California? No, 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 no. no. Oh, I the mean, inland is just Southern California. It's just Southern California. <laughs> That's what you mean. Would be more California. representative of Republicans, so it would make up for the other four senators who would in all well, likelihood but that's be the way, oh, yeah. But that's the way it is now. If you talk a generation or two now, the things could be different or whatever, too. It's, but the whole thing the whole thing is really asinine. But as uh, our friend Doug McIntyre pointed out, and I remember this, too, there was a show in New York called, and still may be on, The 51st State. They wanted to make uh, maybe Puerto Rico the 51st state, I think, or New York City the 51st state, I think, because New York State is so different from the rest of New York. Uh, sorry, New York City is different than New York State. Oh, yeah, real different. And uh, and I think that actually that's what it was. The 51st state was uh, New York had a Puerto Rican issue. That's why I hate that. people that criticize Obama about the 57 state remark. I, I think Obama was probably <laughs> the 57 a, state remark. 57, <laughs> 57 <laughs> states, he said, and, I, and I, he referred to 57 states. And I thought, you know, don't be easy on the guy. He might just be ahead of his time. You what, never what, know. He, did he say one time the 57 states of the United States yes. of America? Well, a little, yeah. little glitch. Yeah, a little so glitch. I mentioned Draper. It's actually Tim Draper. He's the billionaire. He's Not Don Internet Draper guy. from Mad. That's he's a he's his guy. twin brother, yeah. So okay. Tim is Don Draper. Was an old KFWB uh, radio guy or something. So Tim Draper has had led an intriguing no life. He has been chased by buffalo in Africa. Of he's hung from a Cirque du Soleil trapeze uh, for his 50th birthday party. He swam across the San Francisco Bay, frigid waters, without a wetsuit. And one night in China, a street vendor convinced him to down a, cu- uh, a bucket of snake blood to improve his oh. brain. And so he's, he's nuts. Yeah. What, what did he do? The <laughs> he's nuts. What did he do the following week? I don't, probably one. got out of the house. He wants to make three states in California. Why not? Oh, so the other right. big story this week, guys, uh, your close personal friend, uh, Rob uh, Paul Manafort. Uh, you and he party, right? Yes, we do. Well, <laughs> not anymore not unless anymore, you're going to you know. be incarcerated in federal prison because, uh, remember, he was out on $10 million bail, uh, mm-hmm. dollars bail after the charges of money laundering and tax evasion right, and so right. on. And... Um, the judge agreed with the prosecution. There's evidence he's been tampering with witnesses. Can't Apparently, do that. the day after he got indicted, during uh, on that on that day, the judge said, "Now, don't you dare try to talk to witnesses, Mr. Manafort, uh, via con Dios, But you know, I don't want you to uh, get into trouble." Judge speaks Spanish. Okay. And and so the guy, the very next day, he starts sending encrypted messages to witnesses, getting them to change their story that he lobbied only in Europe, not the United States. And so uh, yesterday, the judge said, "You know." She she actually expressed regret. She says, I don't like doing this, you know, but this isn't middle school. I can't take your cell phone away from you. Apparently the so, judge also in the court order, when I understand, uh, Royal, having not read it, uh, put, <laughs> put it in, in put the or, that part of the order in uppercase. In other words, she really wanted to to make sure that he understood it, really. he's supposed to obey the, all the laws yeah. while he's, you know, on... Well, I, I think it kind of Under undermines bail. his idea. Well, it brings up something else. So speaking, of, speaking of Trump and lawyer, uh, Manafort's a lawyer, I guess, right? I assume they're all lawyers. I don't well, think he's a lawyer. Well, all right. Speak, Trump cronies, if you want to put that. Uh, what's his face? Uh, Michael Cohen. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the CNN has been re- now. CNN's been bludgeoning the story to death, but they're saying we hear now some sources. He's ready to flip. He's ready to flip. He's ready to flip. He's ready to flip. Is he ready to flip? Yeah. Well, I think Michael Cohen, uh, probably like all the other guys, he's going to be facing uh, a prosecutor saying you can either go to prison for 30 years or three years. You, know, you give us good stuff on Trump, and it's going to be, 
you know, real easy on you. So uh, who knows if he has enough information that would entice them to do the deal. I don't know. Hey, uh, Rob, you weren't here on the show the other week when we talked about a big, big story. And I'm sorry about that. Well, <laughs> the Miss America pageant yes. is no longer going to have swimsuit oh, competition. So silly. Oh, I think oh. it's tragic. I mean, why not so just make silly. it a spelling bee, right? Well, what uh, will it be? Does well, anybody uh, describe what it's going to be? Well, it's basically the same, except they won't be parading around in their swimsuits. Can you imagine if they made a spelling bee? You can have uh, Bert Parks' hologram come up <laughs> and sing, there she is. Miss A-M-E-R-E. Why not? Now, there's a rebuttal, though, so we're advancing the story. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a a competitor, Miss California, Crystal Lee. Uh, She competed in Miss America. I think she came in second or third. She wrote an op-ed in the L.A. Times saying, hey, you know, walking out in a bikini before a crowd cheering my name gave me a rush and sense of courage I never thought possible. So she thinks they ought ought to keep it. You know, I tried that, too, once. uh, (laughs) I'll bet that was a rush. She says, dropping the swimwear category is a loss to the contest. Mm-hmm. It delivered a powerful message that beauty and brains are not mutually exclusive and you can be a feminist and flaunt your body. Letting contestants don the bikini was inherently feminist because women made that choice for themselves. Future participants will be forced into a new force, a form of sexism, one that emerges out of today's popular feminist narrative. Sounds like you're probably on board I, with I agree 100% with <laughs> it. Absolutely. On, on the other hand... Yeah. Uh, it's just says, when you're going back to Hooters again. Yeah. She well, says now it, you reminded me right away. <laughs> <laughs> going to Hooter, yeah. I mean, to the extent she says it, this that. is the woman's choice to go out in the swimsuit, it really wasn't their choice. That, that was the rule of yeah. the pageant. Yeah. But it seems silly to, to deny that they're talking about physical attractiveness. I mean, Gretchen Carlson, who was the, the Fox anchor, and she was Miss America, I think, 1989, a couple of decades ago. And uh, she came out. And, of course, she sued o- O'Reilly and Ailes for harassment, and, and she settled a case for, for millions. She came out and said, this is a good thing. Uh, she's involved in the, in the pageant and kind of reforming. And she says, we should get rid of the swim suit competition because the, the pageant is not about physical attractiveness. Since when? Yeah, and I'm thinking, all these my, women, are you all, nuts? They're, go- they're all gorgeous. Yeah. They're, they're freaks of nature because of their genes. So what replaces that? Nobody has explained what is going to replace. If you don't judge people on their looks and their brains, you just judge them on their brains, then Ruth Bader Ginsburg would be uh, would probably <laughs> hey. do really well. <laughs> RBG. She, she's the notorious Is she, is she a good speller? I bet she is. I think they ought to make them wear burkas, really, because that way. <laughs> well, why not? <laughs> yeah. If, if they just why want not? to have it, you know, they can have them give uh, it, it, extemporaneous I think answers the ratings to questions. might take a dive after all of this. You, you, you maybe, think? Is, you is think? that possible? And yeah. they do take into account. Uh, they could, by the way, they could put it on radio and it would make sense. Yeah, exactly. Miss <laughs> America on radio. They do take into account whether <laughs> women uh, can think on their feet and whether they're articulate, intelligent. Do you remember yeah. the clip of the lady from <laughs> about 10 years ago? When Jeff Foxworthy was, I think, the host, and he asked her a question uh, about you know South Africa, oh, and gosh. she starts rambling, oh, Lord. and it was well, that's like, right. I oh, that, yeah. it was like ninety seconds of frontier gibberish. She was wishing she had a bikini right <laughs> at that point. Please <laughs> look at Foxworth- me. Don't don't Foxworth- listen to me. Foxworthy wanted to wear a bikini by the way. <laughs> Hey, let's get to our second okay. uh, moron of the week candidate uh, in our D block. Uh, Sarah Mednick, our entertainment insider, is uh, going to join the program. But right now, guys, uh, okay. here's the second candidate for moron of the week uh, to see how uh, this person stacks up to the uh, the Did back you have to flipping. Say stacks. Back After flipping the last <laughs> conversation. FBI Come on, agent. Royal. You're bigger than that. So this is James <laughs> Scott of Waterloo, <laughs> Iowa. And James Scott makes a, a mistake. Uh, he says uh, to himself, I think I'm, I, I want to go buy a cell phone with some counterfeit money. <laughs> so he hands over a $100 bill to the, to the guy, and the guy notices you know, it's counterfeit. And he's arrested. James Scott goes on prison. And it turns out the $100 bill was marked for motion picture use only, and it also said this note is not legal. Okay? So... Uh, yeah, James lovely. Scott I- is put on trial, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a serious thing, you know, counterfeit, Emotion fraud, and so on. Only. And so, uh, how, how would you how would you guess this one came out? We'll add this to the guess to the verdict. How do you would you guess? Do you think that he was found guilty or not guilty of fraud and, and counterfeit uh, money passage? Yeah, I say guilty. Yeah. You what, do you, what do you think, Rod? Just because it's crazy, mm-hmm. not guilty. It was not guilty. The judge well, said nobody yeah. in their right mind yes. would think that this was real. It says for motion picture use only. Oh, well, never yeah. mind. So, oh. can, I, can I change it to uh, not guilty? Yeah, you can change Batting the average 1,000 yeah. right here. Right. Oh, they say your first Yeah, I know. Right. 
Hey, stay with us. Sarah Mednick, Entertainment Insider. Insider, when we come back. We'll be back on CRN with the Royal Oak Show. Hey, Lorraine, do you realize that your mother, my mother-in-law, Chef Maria, has been serving Las Vegas since 1949? Yes, I do, Dennis. That's when she first met Howard Hughes, who fell in love with her cooking. And in 1955, she opened her first restaurant on Fremont Street. Yes, dear. And another great customer was Liberace. Wow. Then in 1962, while Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack were causing global excitement on the Las Vegas Strip, your family opened their second restaurant. And in 1960, 72, Elvis Presley began electrifying Las Vegas audiences and eating in our restaurant. You know, Lorraine, this is quite a town. There's only one Las Vegas. And there's only one bootlegger Italian bistro. Folks, when you're in Las Vegas, come visit us. We'll make you feel like you're part of our family. The bootlegger Italian bistro, conveniently located at 7700 Las Vegas Boulevard, South Strip. Visit our website at www.bootleggerlasvegas.com. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help, you can always get fast help and fast answers. So on your next trip, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, how about right now? Pick up your phone and call SmartFares, plus save up to 75% on your plane reservation. So call right now. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now, 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy, and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now, 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. Welcome back to the Royal Oak Show with our co-host, Ken Jeffries, our boomer correspondent, Rob Marinko. You feel like a boomer correspondent? I do. Good. I'm Good. booming all over. And that music, <laughs> that music tells us it's time for our entertainment insider, Sarah Mednick. Uh, Sarah, welcome back to the program. Thank you for having me. So, uh, th- it was quite a dark day, I think. A dark appearance by Robert De Niro at the, the Tony Awards. It was so uplifting and, and fabulous and uh, all sorts of adjectives I could use for the Tony Awards, but I'll leave it at that. And he got up there and he was giving some award about, you know, the Gene Hirschalt uh, inspirational award or something. And he said, oh, just a minute, before that, Blank Trump, okay? And every, he gets a standing ovation from the Tony Award crowd. So uh, I guess a, w- a lot of people are wondering, mm, is this reflective of the coarsening of society? Uh, as an entertainment insider, what were your impressions, uh, Sarah, of, of uh, Mr. De Niro's performance? Um, well, it was a very brief performance. Um, but, but powerful. <laughs> but very powerful, I think. Th- thank you. Um, I think... I think he was actually introducing Bruce Springsteen. It was for Bruce. Yeah, I made that stuff about the Gene Hirschhold inspirational yeah, it's, it's, award. It's, I don't yeah. even know what that means. <laughs> it was, it was, well, it was much better he than. Introduced the boss. He was introducing the boss, which was a much, I think that was more entertaining than what the boss was actually doing cause on stage because it was just so dull and so boring. Oh, Springsteen didn't do a good job? No. I, I missed that part of the show. No, no. He I was, thought he was a crowd favorite. He was, he was talking about his fam, his family and Christian upbringing, and it just droned on and on and on and on. And I'm just going, I'm not going to pay a hundred dollars a ticket to see. 
see. What that. do you think about the idea? Some people, uh, yes. I heard one commentator say, okay, Trump has just been reelected because the idea of the Hollywood elite going so far, crossing this line, and saying that about Trump, I mean, adding on top the Samantha B comment about Ivanka the week before, it's going to absolutely embolden and solidify and electrify the Trump base, whereas I don't know that it's going to cause everybody in the Tony Award audience to go out and knock on doors and, and distribute literature. It probably is a met net win more for Trump, even though it obviously made De Niro feel good to get it off his chest yeah absolutely i think it's just um it's just you know he felt like there's a stage and i'm robert de niro and i have my chance now to to really say what i feel even though he's been saying it before like banning him from his restaurants and wanting to punch him in the face right and it's like we get it we know you don't like trump you don't need to reiterate that whole story but because of the fact it's the tony awards and he figures a bigger audience, I can say F Trump. And it's not down with Trump, it's F Trump. Yeah. And then Trump, of course, tweeted about it, but he waited a while because he was busy. It seems like we've taken political anger to a whole new level. Yeah. And yet, I wonder what you guys think. Do you think that's true? I mean, let's face it, Nixon and Johnson with all the war issues, people were really angry. A lot of people really hated Clinton. We had a Republican congressman yell liar during one of Obama's you, you lie, yeah, right. yeah, State exactly. of the Union uh, addresses. And over American history, you know, horrible name calling and vicious comments. Uh, it seems like it's at a uniquely high level, but do you think it is the anger? I, I want to say yes, but I am so immersed in the Hollywood thing and with celebrities and, and people in the media that that's that's where my exposure is to those kind of people. So mm -hmm. obvious, they're going to have an obvious point of view, and it's going to be anti-Trump. As far as when you go out in the world, and this is a great example with De Niro, you talk to regular people. And regular people, for the most part, their lives are pretty good. The economy's pretty good. The jobs are pretty good. And they look and they go, why is De Niro, what, what did Trump ever do to De Niro to make him that upset? Yeah. So yeah. I think it actually does work for in, in favor of the president. Sarah, we've only got a couple of seconds, but I understand Paramount is actually instituting active shooter training. Is this true? Yeah, actually, Paramount was at uh, Pictures, which is on Melrose. It's not far from here. Uh, the Sherry Lansing Theater, they had active shooter training for all its employees. It's not the first time a studio has done it. Universal wow. does it all the time. Sign of the, the times. Backlot. Yep. Pretty scary. Hey, Jose, we have come to the point of the show where you're going to play us out with our hot tub time machine segment, so uh, let her rip, please. You guys, former professional DJs, you know who this is. Oh, I do, yeah. And, and what's yeah. the name of the song? It's Judy in the Sky with, uh, is it Judy in the Sky with Diamonds? Judy in Disguise. Kanye West? Disguise. I think so, yeah. And you know who it is? I know who recorded it. John Fred and this Playboy band. I love it. See you next week. CRN Digital Talk Radio prides itself on being the station of every situation. Of course, you can always listen live through your local cable TV provider, as well as on our website at crntalk.com. But if cutting-edge technology is more your style, you'll be happy to know that CRN is now available on Wi-Fi radio. Simply log on to Receiva.com, that's R-E-C-I-V-A.com, and look for CRN. You can access all of our great shows and listen live anywhere in the world. Be part of your favorite shows and get the full CRN listening experience you would have with any traditional radio.